Jackson, are you ready to make a video with me? Can you pop? All right, we're shaking on it. He's gonna be a good pup this video. <laughs> you're in the way, Jackson, what the heck? You're in the camera, you're literally in the frame. Your head is literally in the frame, Jackson. Come on, man. If you're new here, my name is Nuriel. This is my three-year-old, almost four in May. Aussie Doodle named Jackson, and he's just been the best thing ever. Can't believe it's almost been four years. I feel like ever since COVID, those four years have just gone by in an instant, and I don't even remember what happened in those four years. Let me know if you guys feel the same way. But anyways, here is the three-part method that I use that you could use to teach your Aussie Doodle anything that you want. I wanted to give some context on why this works. Aussie Doodles are also known as Velcro dogs. They want to stay by their owners. They're by their owners 24 seven. Like they innately just want to be by their owners. Hence being a Velcro dog. With that, it is a priority for them to make their owners happy, to please their owners. Like it makes them happy to make us happy. Combine that with how intelligent Aussie Doodles are. They're also known as the Einstein breeded dog pretty cool you have the formula and foundation to really teach them anything maybe not to fly but that would be cool that being said let's get straight into the method so the first thing that you want to keep in mind when teaching your osseo or any dog for that matter is positive reinforcement so what is positive reinforcement positive reinforcement is essentially when you reward your dog's behavior in a positive manner you want to make the experience the learning experience as positive as possible dogs learn the best when you positively reinforce good behavior. And so that could be with a tone of your voice, that could be physically petting them, or that could be with a treat. So if I'm telling him to sit, one, I'm being firm in terms of the command, but when he actually does sit, then I'm gonna congratulate him and say, good boy, yes. And see how the tone of my voice is a little bit higher and not like lower. Like imagine if I told him to sit and then I was just like, good boy, good boy. Like it wouldn't really resonate with him. Essentially, you just want to make the learning experience as positive as possible, and especially when they actually do the command. The next part of this method is to use treats. Kind of a no brainer that dogs are very, very motivated by food. It makes the job and the learning process a lot easier. So Jackson here, he loves these almost kind of like stick thingies. He loves them so much and see how like he already knows sit but he's already sitting i didn't and he's putting his paw out and i'm not even saying anything like he sees this food and because he's conditioned that by doing a certain trick or command that he'll get this food and that's just the power of treats all right here you go jackson <laughs> and lastly the third part is consistency very underrated and very overlooked similar to humans on maybe playing a sport if you really want to get really good at that sport you're going to practice practice every single day. Same with the dog. If you want them to master a command or a trick, you're going to want to be consistent in terms of not only the days that they're doing it and learning it, but also consistent for yourself in terms of being consistent with your tone of voice, like I said, and then also praising your dog and making sure that the experience is very, very positive. Also a little bonus tip, for example, Jackson, his new trick that he learned recently was to play dead. And so right now, me, I'm holding the camera right now. So for example, Jackson knows how to lay down. He's already in the down position, but he didn't know how to play dead. And so a bonus tip that I like to do is almost nudge him in the way, nudge him into that position. So play dead. So then he would go, go almost roll over and then he'll get in that position. And then initially I would praise him right then and there. Good boy, good boy, good boy. And then also combine that with a trigger word, which is like my pew, 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 pew. Pew, 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 pew. And so by praising him in that position already, again, by just nudging him into that position, he'll subconsciously know that that's the position that I want him to be in. And low key, it works. So combine that with my food here, it is a recipe for success. Down, good boy, good boy, Jackson. <gasps> Dang, that was, that was insane. Dang, dang Jackson, you knew the cameras were rolling for that one, huh? <laughs> good boy, good boy. 
So just to recap, the three part method is one, positive reinforcement. Again, you wanna factor in the tone of your voice. How are you actually making the experience positive for your dog? Two, treats, self-explanatory. And three, consistency. It's a lot easier for a dog to be on a schedule and really hone in on the craft. Like, kind of like humans, if you practice practice every single day, you'll eventually master it. Same with dogs. For all you experienced dog owners, let me know if I missed anything. Please leave them in the comments down below. I'm sure your comments and advice could be very helpful for any new Osseoodle owners out there. As a reminder, please hit that like button. Jackson and I really appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching and have an amazing day. But <clears throat> There's a plane. <laughs>